Hi, our topic for the day is diagnosis of pregnancy associated hypertension or hypertension in pregnancy. This stays to be an important topic because it complicates up to 10% of pregnancies and it forms a deadly triad with hemorrhage and infection as an important cause of maternal deaths and for maternal morbidity. When we talk about pregnancy and hypertension, what is hypertension in pregnancy? So, if we have a reading of systolic BP more than 140 mm mercury, a diastolic BP more than 90 mm mercury, measured by auscultatory method using a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer with Korotkov phase 5 to define diastolic blood pressure, that is, absence of signs. Uh, sounds to be identified and two readings taken four hours apart then it is called hypertension in pregnancy besides this a rise in systolic bp of more than 30 millimeter mercury a diastolic bp rise of more than 15 millimeter mercury or a significant rise in mean arterial pressure which is also called as delta hypertension mean arterial pressure being calculated as diastolic blood pressure plus one third of pulse pressure pulse pressure is systolic bp minus diastolic bp so any of these if present then even when the value is not more than 114 by 90 millimeter mercury we will not label it as hypertension but then it warrants surveillance of the patient once we diagnose a patient to be hypertensive in pregnancy, then we need to decide on the type of hypertension. This includes five types, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, chronic hypertension and superimposed preeclampsia on chronic hypertension. Talking about each of these individually, we would say gestational hypertension, this is again a rise of BP 140 by 90 millimeter mercury or more. It should be noticed after 20 weeks of pregnancy in a patient who is previously normotensive. The patient should not have proteinuria or any other signs for the diagnosis of preeclampsia and the rise in BP should resolve by 12 weeks postpartum. That means this would be a retrograde diagnosis after 3 months of delivery of the patient. If the BP goes normal post delivery, then only we can label it as gestational hypertension. Preeclampsia is a patient of gestational hypertension fulfilling all these criteria plus having proteinuria in addition or she has end organ damage due to system wide endothelial leak which happens in the hypertension of pregnancy. When we talk about proteinuria, it is the primary diagnostic criterion. GHT plus proteinuria means preeclampsia. Proteinuria is diagnosed by a urinary protein of 300 mg or more in a 24 hour sample, a urine protein creatinine ratio of more than 0.3, or a persistent value of 30 mg per deciliter protein or plus one dipstick protein in random urine samples. If any of these are present, then the patient is labeled as proteinuric and besides that, the signs of end organ damage are reflected as thrombocytopenia, that is platelet counts less than 1 lakh per microliter, renal dysfunction as serum creatinine more than 1.5 mg per deciliter or doubling of baseline, hepatocellular necrosis manifested as elevated liver enzymes more than twice normal, serious symptoms in the form of headache and visual disturbances and presence of pulmonary edema. Besides the uh, diagnosis of preeclampsia, the next one is eclampsia. Eclampsia is findings corresponding to preeclampsia with added convulsions not attributable to other causes. The fourth type is chronic hypertension. Chronic hypertension is again a BP of 140 by 90 millimeter mercury but that should be diagnosed before pregnancy or before 20 weeks of pregnancy or both. It is difficult to diagnose it if the patient comes after 20 weeks of pregnancy for the first time. Superimposed preeclampsia on chronic hypertension is 
when a patient who is chronic hypertensive reports a sudden worsening of hypertension with preeclampsia we need to differentiate all these causes because we need to identify preeclampsia syndrome which is more ominous than the other causes